Hey there, Tija Chanel here. Welcome back to my channel. If it is your first time here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please go ahead and subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button and turn on your notifications. So I'm bringing back to my channel a series of videos that I used to do a while back called Manifestation Mondays, where I will be answering you all's questions, sharing manifestation tips, and sharing my own personal manifestation experiences. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you all how I was able to manifest a free car. No, it is not clickbait. Now, before we get into today's video, I want to invite you to head on over to tjchanel.com because for the duration of November, I am offering 50% off of all of the coaching packages and strategy sessions that I have including the ones for new and inspiring real estate agents. So if you go ahead and add it to your cart, use the code PINKVEMBER, I will show it here on the screen as well, and receive 50% off of all of the strategy sessions and coaching packages for the rest of November 2018. So... Back in September of 2017, <clears throat> my car was stolen. So I had a 2014 Chrysler, what was it, Chrysler 200. And I had that car for a few years. I was very, very, very close to paying it off. And we had moved into a new apartment, a luxury apartment in an affluent area. But for whatever reason, the parking garage at that condo was like a hot spot for break-ins and theft. I do not know why. Why well, I know why. I guess, where do thieves go? They go to the affluent areas and steal. Okay, I get it. So, my kids and I had gotten up and we were headed to the store. Most likely it was Target because that's where we go. So, we get out into the parking garage and my car is gone. Now, I did have full coverage insurance, but as you more than likely know, um, the insurance is really just there to cover the financers behind in their bottom line. So, my insurance was able to cover what was left on the car but I didn't get any residual back. I didn't get it a check back or whatever because my car wasn't yet paid off. So, um, you know, we were without a car for almost a year. So from September to June of 2018, we were, we were without a car. Now, at first, you go through, of course, I went through those stages of grief where you're pissed off and you're angry because I've had a car stolen from me before years ago but i was able to well i wasn't but the cops were able to recover my vehicle it was stolen on thanksgiving eve 2009 yeah 2009 and um believe it or not it was what we later found out is that it was being used to transport illegal illegal aliens to and from the border crazy right so eventually um it took a couple of months let me see i think it was like no it wasn't it's was about a month it was gone for about a month we only had that car was paid off because when we purchased it we paid cash for it years prior and um so all that we had on it was liability so i couldn't file an insurance claim because i wasn't gonna get jacked for it so the cops eventually found it. They called me and I was shocked that they were actually able to find it. At the time I lived in Houston and they found it in San Antonio, which is a few hours away from Houston. Um, in the, in the, uh, I want to say the forest, but in the, not the forest, this is another word I'm looking for. In the woods, um, kind of wedged between two trees, there was a flat tire, okay? So, um, they were able to recover the car. It was still running. Um, and then we went to, we had to drive my friend and my brother and I, we went to San Antonio to get it. It was filthy. They removed the back seats. Don't know what happened to the back seats, chicken bones in there. It was just, it was a mess, but I was able to drive it back home and, um, 
you know, use it for at least another year or so. So I know what it feels like to have a car stolen. Um, and that car was a Chrysler to a Chrysler town and country minivan. I love that minivan. Um, so it's something about <coughs> the ease of Chrysler's being stolen. I don't know what it is. Okay. So anyway, back to this story. So I went through the stages of grief, which were anger. I was really, really pissed off about it. You know, we work and we pay our bills and, you know, we try to accumulate things for ourselves, right? And I was really excited that I only had about another year to pay on that vehicle. I would have been done done, right? And then it was gone. So I had to get to a point, and this is where the magic lies in this story. I had to get to a point where I was okay with not having a car. I had to get out of that mode of, I need a car, I need a car. I'm stressed out because I don't have a car um, type of mode that we typically go into, right? So Uber is a thing, Lyft is a thing. So I had to shift my perspective and be okay with what the reality of it was, okay? And the reality was that we lived in a prime location where everything was less than five minutes away. We lived across the street from the mall, across the street from Target, my favorite store. Um, pretty much everything that I needed was within five minutes, okay? It wasn't necessarily walking distance because you had to cross the freeway to get to the um, mall and Target and all of that, but it was in very close proximity. So the Lyft rides were less than $6 each, each time. And uh, with, I liked Lyft over Uber because they would give you free rides. They would upgrade you to um, whatever their luxury service, Uber, no, it's not Uber, Lyft, Lyft XL, what is it? No, whatever the luxury cars or y'all know what I'm trying to say. Um, so I really, really enjoyed Lyft for that. So I had to become comfortable and, and see the good in it, right? So the first good is that I don't have a car note. Don't have to worry about paying a car note or insurance. So that was saving me four or $500 a month. And then let's see what else. We live really, really close to everything. So the Lyft drives uh, were really inexpensive. And we only had to leave a few times a month to go get groceries um we had a backyard at our apartment so the kids were able to go out and play we had amazing amen amenities in the building so leaving you didn't feel like you had to leave and go out to enjoy life i'm a homebody anyway so um i had to really shift my perspective to see the positives in the situation so um, we were real cool with that. I would spend maybe $40 a month on Lyft drives. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than a car note and insurance. So then my ex, of all people, called me one day and said that he was looking to get a new vehicle. And if you understood our relationship, you would be shocked too, right? So... Um, he called one day and he said that he was looking to get a new vehicle and I was like, congratulations. Um, and he said that when he did finally get or find his new car, that he would give me the one that he had. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, but I, but based on our history, I, you know, I'm a, the type of person when dealing with him, you got to show me so I believe it, right? So I was like, yeah, 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 okay, that's cool, whatever. Then about a month later, he calls again. He says, hey, I found my car. I found the car that I wanted. It was a hybrid Lexus, but it was in where? San Antonio. He lives in Houston. At the time, I was living in Dallas, and he said, I'm going to drive to Dallas, and we were all getting the car together drive to San Antonio, pick up this car, and you can drive the old car back home. Um, cool. So, we ended up 
he came and he and we ended up going to San Antonio. We got his really cute. It's a Lexus. I don't remember the name of it, but it is a hybrid, uh, super cute car. And um, he held up his end of the bargain, right? All I had to do was just drive. That, that's really all that I had to do. Um, and once we got back to Dallas with his new car, he handed over the keys um, and everything for his old car. And that is legit how it manifested. Now, what I was writing in my I Am Manifestation journal, you know, in, in my on my vision board pages, I have a Porsche Cayenne um, in there. I have a BMW X5 in there. So the car that he gave me is a Toyota Prius. I don't even know what year it is, um, but that's what he gave me. Now, is it the Porsche? Is it the Tesla, the Mercedes that I want? No, but I want to tell you all about a story that I absolutely love and that really hit home with me when I read it in the book, The Game of Life by Florence Scovelshin. She spoke of a young lady who wanted a new set of dishes. Now, this book was written either in the 1800s or early 1900s. I don't remember because it's down in my car, but it was written a whole lot of years ago. But in this, in the book, the story that she told is about a young lady who wanted a new set of dishes. Oh, when life was simple, right? When all we wanted was a new set of dishes. But the set of dishes that she wanted was a couple of hundred dollars, which was a whole lot of money back in those days. So Florence told her to, you know, visualize you having these new set of dishes, um, write it out, script it, do all of these law of attraction things, and you will get your new set of dishes. So what happens? Somebody comes to her and gives her a single broken plate. Now, it wasn't completely broken, like shattered, but it was all chipped up. And she was like, what the hell is this? This is a raggedy... Now, I'm adding my spin on the story. This is a raggedy plate. I, act, I asked for a full set of beautiful dishes, but I ended up with this broken plate after all of the manifestation work, after all of the meditation, the scripting, the visualizing... I end up with a broken plate and so Florence told her you have to shift again your perspective the broken plate was the evidence that God the universe had heard her prayer and that her new set of dishes were on the way this was like the preview right I heard you we always get that confirmation after we pray for a thing we meditate on something there's always a sign that we will receive to let us know that okay god says i heard you right and that everything starts to everything is set into motion so that you can manifest the thing that you really desire to have so florence told her to put on her big girl panties appreciate this broken plate and then a short while after she was able to manifest the set of dishes the exact set of dishes that she wanted so that is how i view my car now i love the car it is amazing on gas i put like 25 dollars in there every single i don't drive that much 25 dollars a month in the tank that's really all i don't have a car note i just have to maintain insurance and regular maintenance that is it like i so appreciate so 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 appreciate the car and even when i do manifest my Porsche Cayenne, BMW, whichever one comes first. I'm still going to hold on to this car because I love it that much. And it's always about appreciating what it is that you have. Taking care of that car as if it is the Porsche Cayenne 2019. Hallelujah, won't you do it? Right? So that is the key. Let me say it again just in case you missed it. You have to shift your perspective. And know that whatever it is that you desire to have is on its way to you. So if you get something that kind of mimics what you want, but it's not exactly what you want, you still have to stay in a state of appreciating it. Now, how was I able to manifest this car without really manifesting the car, right? 
I wasn't focused on manifesting the car. I was okay and content in the state that we were in, taking Uber and Lyft. I was totally happy and okay with that. And I looked for the good in the situation. It's saving me a whole lot of money, blah, blah, blah. I have a driver. I looked at it as if I, you know, was super wealthy and I had a personal driver. That's how I saw it because I don't like driving. Okay. So whatever situation you're in, you have to shift your perspective and view it from a different angle, right? Because of course it could be a lot worse than what it is, um, but in order for it to get better, you have to appreciate the way that it is right now. So I really hope that you all enjoyed um, this video. More Manifestation Monday videos to come. Please make sure that you comment down below if you have a video request or if you have a manifestation story that you would like me to share here on my channel, please DM it to me on Instagram at Tidra Chanel. You can email me, Tidra Chanel at gmail.com, okay? Tidra Chanel at gmail.com if you have a manifestation story that you would like to share. Now, I've been doing these manifestation videos for a minute. And I always get people sharing their stories down below based on a video that I put out there. So um, if that is you and you watch one of my videos and implemented any of the tips or techniques that I have shared, please share that with me so I can feature it here on Manifestation Mondays by sending it to my email, teacherchanel at gmail.com. Please make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already. And you will see me in the next one. Bye. No, not clickbait. Not, damn it. So I'm bringing back a series of videos that I used to do a while ago called Ma Monday. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Called Monday Manifestations. That's not what I want. Monday, Monday. No. Called Monday. No, that's not right either.